if any one of you thought that I needed a reason to talk about Gladiator, you're wrong. I don't exactly need a reason, but I'm happy with Motor City Nerds. I'm not going to hook my mic back up the way it should be. I will eventually. But anyway, I realized the other day, um, Gladiator 2 is supposed to come out this year, which is a crazy thing to say. And I don't think people realize how crazy that is if you're younger. Because Gladiator is our thing. Like, we really love that a whole lot. I can recite that movie to you. There are three movies that I keep downloaded on my phone and my tablet at all times in case a disaster strikes. Predator, Jaws, Gladiator, all times. Other ones are mix and matchy. Those three are constant. It's my thing. I'm Abby with Motor City Nerds. Like, share, comment, subscribe on OF. I'm on TikTok. I'm on all the things down below. But can we just talk about what they're saying about Gladiator 2 and the greatness of Gladiator really quick? As a millennial film buff... There are certain things that we will stand by and we don't care what you have to say. The first time we see Memento, we think we know everything. After we see Donnie Darko in Pulp Fiction, we think we can edit a movie together and have it make no sense with time and it will make all the sense. I'm just saying, Gladiator is up there. Not only that, everybody loves Gladiator. If you don't love Gladiator, you suck. I'm just kidding. You don't suck, but like, where have you been? You can try and tell me it's not as good as we make it out to be. It is. This is stressful and nobody's talking about it. And I guess the other day... There was a big campaign for it, and they had a bunch of Roman soldier people dressed up at whatever they were showing it at. Now, the word on the street, and this is one sentence from like one interview, is that it was so good when they showed it to executives. Now, I think these executives are idiots. If you've been around, uh, they make terrible decisions. But apparently it was so good that the execs at Paramount and everywhere were like, no, we're, gonna, we're, we're double backing this, and, and we're putting our money where our mouth is, and this is so good, and we're going to do this huge campaign for it. And I'm like, I feel like we should be talking about it now. It's Gladiator 2. There are certain things that you can say that nonsense with, okay? Don't do it with this. You can throw all the Denzel at us you want. We'll respect that, but it's Gladiator. This is a loyal fan base. We love it. We're millennials, and we're here to tell you this cannot, you can't do that. You can't say things like that and then have it be trash. You really cannot. So the synopsis for it is that Pedro Pascal is an army general or in the military somehow, and he gets real sick of how we're just throwing away lives for whatever cause, so they get pissed at him and throw him into a gladiator situation. And then there's... Meslo? I'm sorry, I don't know the actor's name, the main one, but he's already a gladiator. And then Denzel Washington's going to be there, and he's going to be in the Proximo role. He's going to be the mentor. So I, it sounds like we're hitting the same beats, and that they're like causing an uprising or a revolution. So it sounds like the same beats, but we're doing more with like what could have happened at the end of Gladiator if their plan would have worked with Maximus. But I don't know, because I'm just like, how do we all feel about this? I feel like you're throwing Denzel and Pedro at us as human shields, and then I, that's a huge thing to say that it's so good that we're going to change up our marketing campaign and all this stuff. And I was like, why wouldn't you start having buzz now? Why are they, why is this like hidden away kind of? It's, it's odd because it's Gladiator. But I just rewatched it for the billionth time and I'm like, no, do you want to know what? It is that good. It's so good. And that CGI, the only major CGI I like with Ridley Scott because most of his stuff is there. It sets, even with Napoleon, you can touch it. You can see it. There are horses falling. There are extras. And that makes a difference. And one thing Ridley does is he immerses you and you are immersed in the first 30 seconds of that movie. You are in that battle. You are with Maximus. You are ready to go. And I'm like, can we recreate that? I don't know if we can. I think you can visually, Ridley, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. It is a visually beautiful film. It is beautiful. It's brutal and it's beautiful. And it's a perfect movie to use when I say, and if you've been here, you can fast forward like 30 seconds, film is a different medium from other things. So when people are like, oh, you need to, uh, whatever, whatever, with an adaptation of a book or a comic book, and they're like, we didn't get every little thing. I'm like, yes, because this is a different medium. Film is different. And Predator, Jaws, and Gladiator are my big ones I use when I'm like, do you see the pictures on a screen? Do you hear and see the visuals and hear the sounds there that are coming out, even if they're not dialogue? We know the vibe. We know what's going on. We know the story, even if they're not saying it to our little faces like we're dumb little babies. We know what's going on. Gladiator is the, a perfect example for that. We know what's going on. We know what's happening, all with visuals. We see the soldier standing up when he walks by. We see them wanting to shake his hand. We see that he's highly respected. We don't have to know what they're saying. When Maximus is in the pit for the first time and he runs out to save that one guy, the big German guy, and get him back into the huddle, it shows everybody there, this guy's willing to put his neck on the line for all of us. So we should stay together and work together. Everything is visual and they show it all. And the thing is, it's all that polite shit talking, like with Game of Thrones kind of, where everybody's saying one thing, but they mean another. Unless you're with Proximo, which is the best character in the entire film, and the gladiator people, all the Senate, all the royal people, everybody is talking in, okay, well, I'm really talking smack or making a threat to you, but this other thing. Even when uh, Marcus Aurelius and his daughter are talking, if you were born a man, what a Caesar you would have made. And all of that. And she's, he's saying, let's pretend I was a good father. And he's saying, you got to be there because we know your brother's about to go postal. And he's going to look to you. And if we need to keep any type of 
even keel here you need to be on your best because you already know how he's going to be with you there's so much being said in this without it being said and people always act like it's three hours long i'm like no gladiator's like two hours and 20 minutes maybe some change if you add on like the credits there are a few movies that if you try to date me and you're seeing me and in the beginning you watch them all the way through with me and you don't want to punch me in the mouth for being annoying it is gladiator predator jaws zoolander heavyweights you don't want to watch those with me it's not fun just gonna recite it to you and i don't care and i mean that i've i i identify with proximo very much i love proximo he's my favorite character why oliver reed is just that monologue he gives about the thunder and the and the applause and that coming up and he's like looking at russell crowe and he's looking at him but he's not he's looking through him telling that story of being a gladiator and then when he tells him i'm an entertainer and then does the right thing man proximo is just the best he is such a great character and people do not talk about him enough Oliver Reed kills it as that character. Another thing, I don't think we even get to Rome until like halfway through the movie. And his friend, the black dude who's in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, I always get geeked when I see him. Anytime he's in anything, I'm like, Gladiator friend. Hell yeah, you're here. Because he's great. I don't even think he has a name in Gladiator. But you want to talk about the definition of teamwork makes the dream work. Those two and the rest of them. I'm like, geez, this is awesome. And Commodus is white armor. I could just go on and on about the greatness of Gladiator. But it truly is. It's very good. It was the example that I used to everybody when uh, Joaquin Phoenix got announced as the Joker. And everybody was like, oh my god. And I go, no, he's going to be great. It's Joaquin Phoenix, first and foremost. Second of all, have you ever watched the little things he does with characters and the little mannerisms he does? Go back and watch Commodus. The spinning the Senate, spinning the sword in the Senate, I'm not paying attention to any of you. I'm just waiting to talk. I'm just waiting to, for my chance and not hearing anything you're saying. When he shows up and says, did we miss it? Did we miss the battle? Like, he doesn't know that they missed it and is acting all dumb. I'm like, oh my God, Joaquin, it is so funny. But, oh, this tongue sticking out, or when he goes like this... Just these little mannerisms he adds to those characters, because Commodus is essentially a, a toddler throwing a tantrum. Commodus is a toddler throwing a tantrum over a toy you're taking away from him. That's how he looks at it. He's, he's seeking out daddy issues with the people of Rome, and it's a problem. But that whole lead-up scene, that whole monologue that to his sister of, am I not merciful? He's all throwing a fit. He's like, and now they love, now they love Maxim. It's more than they love me. And it's just a kid throwing a tantrum, but on a mega level. But it works, and we love to hate him. Like, how are you going to have something on par with this? I don't know. The pacing in this is flawless. Every single time I watch this movie, I'm like, aren't we only like five minutes in? And then I realize I'm a half hour in. And that's kind of crazy to feel when something is two plus hours. If you have not watched Gladiator recently on uh, not edited, like not on TV, I highly suggest it. I guarantee you it is way more brutal than you remember. Even when they first enter the Coliseum still. It is a marvel to look at. Now, this is what I want to talk about for a moment. What kind of system did they have for where you were sitting? Well, there had to be some type of system, right? Were there Coliseum workers? Because we have the big house, U of M, their stadium. And it is, it's, one, it's in the top three, maybe, biggest stadiums in the country, right? Now, shoot, imagine it's for gladiator pitting. But how do, you, how do you figure out where you're going? You know you had to talk to your neighbor that day and be like, you going to the games today? Hell yeah, I'm going to the games today. Okay, well, what time are you going to be there? How did you tell people what section you were in? Or was there one? Was it just first come, first serve? Did you rush? Did you bum rush? How did it go in the Coliseum? Was there a system? I'm not saying it was perfect, but I want to know. Because how did you say, like, oh, that Maximus fight? I want to see that, but I don't want to be late for it. Can you hold me a seat? Where are you going to be at? Did you just say, like, upper deck? What do we say here? Unless you were by the, like, emperor box, how were you finding your friends at the Coliseum? Somebody let me know if there was a real system for that. There might have been. The Romans were kind of on top of things like that. They're claiming this Gladiator 2 is, is that good, and but I'm like, why wouldn't you be plastering that everywhere if that was the case, and not just in like two articles, one sentence? Wouldn't you be screaming that from the rooftops? Because it's Gladiator, or do they just not realize the level of loyalty there is to this? The, the last few haven't been great. People can argue with me all day. House of Gucci was weird and not that great. Uh, the Martian was the last really great thing he did. What else? He did something weird in between all of this, and then he had Napoleon come out. And Napoleon was fine. It was good as a movie, but visually, of course, it was stunning because it always is. But he kind of had a slump for a minute, but he was also going through a really rough time. And I'm like, if this Gladiator 2 is what brings Ridley back to Ridley, I'm going to be, whoa, really taken back. And I just was like, I read that, and I said, we need to talk about that because I, I, I think we're all forgetting, and I don't understand why it's not being high more. I think it's marked for fall. And I saw that, and then I realized it is 2024. Gladiator 2? That's a cr I feel like that's a fever dream thing to say. Obviously, I'm not, like, done up or anything ready to record, because I'm just like, 
you want to know what? I drank a Seagram's and I feel like yelling about Gladiator 2 and where what's going on with that. And yeah, I'm Abby with more senior nerds. Tell me what you think down below. Um, I'm on OF. I'm on TikTok. I'm on all the things in the description. And yeah. How do we feel? <laughs> How do we feel about this? Not that I don't hate on youngins when I'm saying this. But I was like, I don't think you guys will ever fully understand like the impact or the magnitude certain movies and stuff had because you guys are have so many different options and it's like no we were all seeing the same things and they were huge and this is one of those things so i'm like whoa i'm trying to think of something to compare it to like if they said they were coming out with something too and and the generation below me would be like what there's no way that's a that's crazy but i really can't think of anything because it's so different, and that's great. That's awesome that they have more options and things like that, but millennials are going to crawl, crawl out of their decrepit little caves for all of this stuff.